Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Mob Mentality Show. I'm Chris Lucian, and I'm here with my co-host, Austin Chadwick. And today, we're going to talk about tools for remote mob programming, or just remote in general. And so I just wanted to kick it off to Austin and ask him, what are the tools that come to mind as being really helpful to you for remote mob programming? Nice, yeah, so for me, I'm basically standing on the shoulders of giants. I mean, for one, many people have been remote, program, remote pro programming for a while, and uh, they've already discovered lots of great tools, and especially in our current context, I was off, uh, I was not at work on the day when they set up all the tools for remote mobbing when you transitioned <laughs> from in-person to in-person to remote mobbing. And so what happened was I showed up the next day and they had pretty much everything set up and a lot of the issues ironed out and everything was working well. And one of them that I've really enjoyed is uh, any desk or similar tools that uh, basically make it when you're mobbing, there's no transition of control, right? You know, so we're all any desk, into the same, uh, you know, we call it the remote mob station. So it's a computer with any desk running, and we're all uh, any desk into it, and we can all control it at any time. And the mob timer is running there. So we have Mobster running on the mob station, and when it switches from driver to navigator, it's just like it was with in person. Is like, oh, the screen goes black, uh, the next person starts uh, driving, and then the other person starts navigating. And it's completely seamless uh, instead of like, you know, with some remote uh, video tools, you have to like give control. Okay, it's on my PC. Now I'm going to give you control and then get it back. And that makes having a short timer, which can be a really great thing to experiment with mobbing, uh, basically go away because you'll be incentivized to make it longer and longer so you don't have to deal with that problem. Uh, you that know, was one uh, I noticed that there was, uh, when people are using AnyDesk, it's, uh, it's really interesting too. No one is the host of the AnyDesk. It's actually uh, a, a machine on a server somewhere, um, or sorry, the, the client is on a, on a server somewhere, and everyone's remote. And so everybody gets roughly the same experience as long as their internet connection is relatively the same. And I found that really interesting because I think one of the things that was really bothering me, remote programming in the past, maybe even remote, remote pairing, was that I would get into this situation where there'd be the person that was hosting everybody on their machine would get a much better experience than everyone else and kind of all hell broke loose from that. But yes, but yeah. this any desk on a server somewhere has been really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely been digging that. Uh, how about for you? What stands out for tools? Um, yeah, so if I was to pick a, a top one for remote mob programming, I think it would be Microsoft Teams channels. And the the main idea is that your chat channels, you know, just like on Slack or something, you can create a video conference on a channel. And so uh, kind of from a uh, de department standpoint, being able to see all of the different mobs going on in channels with the video icon next to it, is kind of like walking around the office and seeing the mobs actually operating in person. And so going from basically six to eight mobs in person and seeing the six to eight video icons there and clicking on the video icons and seeing who's there and then being able to just join that call is essentially like walking out to the different mobs and talking to everybody. And so one thing that I was really just super happy with was this idea that the chat and the video call were broadly visible across the different teams. The chat is searchable and everything, everything really ended up having a really cool uh, related uh, piece. And so um, that, that's kind of my, my number one tool that I've come out of this. And AnyDesk is pretty up, uh, high up there too. Um, yeah, and one, thing I'll, one thing I'll add on the uh, Teams channels is I've been loving the idea of it too. It's been really cool. It's like a direct translation of being in person in a building with a bunch of different mobs and teams going on. And it's, it's pretty wonderful. Um, but one thing I will add is whenever you join our mob, it's much more dramatic than when you walk in before. Because we'll be mobbing and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's just like, poof. And then you're there and it's like, whoa, hey, Chris. You know? <laughs> I need, so I I need like, like smoke to like fly up from. The, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We need to find that camera filter and yeah, then you exactly. can use that right when you enter. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and one cool thing about it is we're translating it, uh, you know, to even something like an internal department uh, open space. We're going to, we were open spaces have rooms that people hold sessions in. We're even going to be doing that uh, remotely using the team channels. And it's just super cool. Um, one other tool that uh, jumps out to me is kind of uh, uh, going off of the archive, archivist role in the model programming RPG is kind of drawing and you know making it visible to the team. And um, so two tools come up to mind for me. One is draw.io. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're really good at pointing out when uh, we're having a circular conversation and when it's good to start <laughs> drawing. <laughs> and so just even today, I felt like that was happening where it was like, I think I said the same thing that he did and then he's saying the same thing he just said and so I'm like okay let's just go to start drawing and so one that's been really useful is draw.io and uh, so it's kind of a free form tool where you can just start drawing uh, you can start making boxes and you know connecting them with arrows you can type in the search basically anything and it'll find an icon and you can drag and drop it onto the screen and so it's been incredibly useful for things like uh, you know, workflows like this is going to happen, then this, then this. Um, the other day we were using it to say like, okay, here are our classes. It was kind of a rough UML distilled class diagram. What are we mocking and what are we not mocking? And what are we using as the real thing? And uh, it really helped clarify where we were going. Uh, with product owners, we've used it to diagram like, okay, here's the page you see in the app. Here's the backend function it's calling. And here's our status on it where, you know, we got a yellow checkbox, which means it works, but we're still cleaning it up. It's green, it's ready to go. Uh, you know, it's just been an incredibly helpful tool for uh, communicating and uh, taking those frustrating conversations and making them uh, much more productive. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, Draw.io, for those who don't know, um, it's kind of like Visio, if, you, if you're familiar with Microsoft Visio, but it's a cloud version, online version. Uh, typically what we do though, it's, it's still single user, it's not collaborative to my knowledge, but what we do is we have an any desk session open and then and then drawing using draw.io and everybody can manipulate the diagram, which has been, yeah, really cool. It's like having a whiteboard, but everybody has a pen at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Right, what's what's next on your me. list? Yeah. 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 The, um, that reminds me of uh, talking about the archivist role. Just mind maps in general have been super useful for kind of, you know, touching every, you know, uh, just mapping things in general, maybe eco mapping if you're doing something like uh, domain driven stuff. But uh, coggle.it uh, is a mind mapping tool that's collaborative and online. And I've used that a couple times to just kind of like just brain dump from multiple people into a domain. And it's been it's been a really cool tool as well. Uh, just fully customizable mind map and because of the shortcuts and kind of the shared language of mind mapping, it's a little bit better than draw.io for uh, kind of dumping ideas out to uh, a canvas, so to speak. And so that, that's been really cool. Um, and, and so, yeah, that's another one that I just tack on to the draw.io. If you're kind of in a conversation and you're trying to like lay out everybody's knowledge, that, that one's really great. But I think the one that I want to focus on is uh, for retrospectives is idea boards. Um, I don't know, so, so uh, I think uh, a mobber on the team had showed this to me and it's super simple, but what's really nice is kind of without a user name and password, it has like a CAPTCHA and to make sure that you're not a bot and then, and then you're in and it's uh, sticky notes that are shared with a voting system and we've used this for cross departmental retros. We've done lean coffees with 30 people in them. We've, we've done some really cool stuff to, uh, that would have been pretty much impossible in person to do in the same amount of time. And so uh, we found that, that that was actually a really cool thing. I don't know, you, you have some experience with it too. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, what, all I gotta say is give accolades for the tool and how we've been using it. I mean, uh, people who are not familiar with retrospectives are like, oh, are you going to do that you know, meeting? Are you going to use uh, the sticky idea boards thing? And so they're like asking for it. So it's yeah. been cool to <laughs> see people once they get a taste for it, they're like, okay, let's, let's keep doing that for the meetings and our retrospectives. And uh, so that, that's been fun to see. And it's, it's, it's great because it, that in-person experience of all being at a, a whiteboard or a sticky sheet like this and putting the stickies up and then dot voting them, 
it again is kind of like a one for one translation of being in person to being in remote. You get that same shared experience. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I mean, it's also interesting side effects when you do that kind of meeting remote is you have the chat along the side. And we mentioned using the emojis. Uh, you've also used the chat on the side to vote, right? So if you're yeah. doing a link coffee, right, you can say, okay, so we hear all our topics. They're all the stickies are on the board. They've been dot voted. And then the timer goes off. And uh, uh, do you want to explain how you vote on whether to proceed or not? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in Microsoft Teams, again, you have this ability to react to chats. And I think there's something in there very similar to Slack, although I'm, not, I'm less familiar with Slack. Um, and what's, what's really cool there is that you can just react with a thumbs up. And so you put in three chats, continue either or move on, and people will just react to those and then you have your vote. And so the, the kind of moving on in a lean coffee ends up happening supernaturally. And uh, so, you know, one thought is maybe have an episode where we do a lean coffee with a number of uh, maybe former guests and uh, and uh, see if we can kind of get through that same process remotely. That'd be a cool experiment. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Uh, I'll throw out one more tool and then I think that'll be it for me for this episode is, uh, again, in Microsoft Teams, there's uh, something called Planner, which is similar to Trello, where you have, you can make boards where you have different columns and you can move the stickies and tasks around. Um, and so one thing is, uh, again, with the kind of archivist role, or, or maybe even process cop uh, with uh, being on it with the Kanban board is making it visible. So for when we mob, we usually have any desk on one screen um, and that's where we're looking at the code or whatever we're sharing when we're mobbing. I have mobbers on another screen where I can interact with their face. <laughs> yeah. And then on another screen, I typically have up the Teams planner, which is kind of like our Kanban board. So it's very similar to what we had in person where we had the Kanban, the other people, and then the code. It's just now virtual. And um, having that up all the time is a great reminder of like, okay, what are we working on? What are we doing? Or if someone has an idea, we just kind of throw it in there and put it in the to-do column for later. Um, and it's also been a great interaction tool with our uh, product owners and marketing and our daily standups with them. And that now uh, the work was visible before, but they had to physically come over to the building. And there are benefits to that, right? It led to in-person collaboration. Um, but we've been able to simulate that very well. It's just much easier for him to come to the Kanban board and talk to us. All he does is just in teams, join our mob, go to that channel and joins our mob. And then he has access to the Kanban board all the time. But then we just talk to him and say like, okay, here's what we did yesterday. Here's what we're currently working on. Here's what we're thinking about doing next. And, uh, so, so far it's been, uh, um, it's been a positive, um, on all sides actually going remote. It's made it more visible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I've noticed that too. It's been really cool. Um, and another thing I'll, I'll say is that, you know, you mentioned Trello, but we didn't mention it yet. <laughs> um, and so yeah. Planner and Trello. So, uh, you know, for the Mob Mentality show, we actually use Trello for planning and then we use Zoom for recording the episodes. Um, in the office, we're using Planner and Teams for, for video and things along those lines. Um, and so this is a, uh, a really cool, you know, they're two separate tool chains. They both work really well for us. And uh, I'll also say, I know that Zoom has had a lot of bad press lately, but I'm uh, currently on the newest version of Zoom and uh, they have kind of ratcheted up the security features that are in Zoom now. Um, it dropped us into lobbies, had us muted, all that other stuff. Uh, so, so Zoom is, you know, I, I think that its reputation will get better soon. And then finally, I'll just say, you know, I'll, I'll kind of do a little shout out to the, the gaming community and uh, Discord as an application. And so Discord is great, uh, a great alternative to having the, the chat channels and video, uh, voice channels. And you can share screen, but you can't, really, uh, you can't really manipulate the screen, but you can stream or broadcast what you're doing out to other people in the channel. And so Discord might be another good option for maybe open source mobbing and things like that, where uh, you want a quick tool to work with um, right away. So uh, I don't know, anything else, Austin, on any of that? Yeah, before we wrap it up, I guess the last thing I'll say that's been proved very useful as far as tools go for remote mob programming is uh, anything that's, if you're doing something like AnyDesk, any tool that's installed on the remote mob station, it's also uh, very beneficial to have as many of those tools and access on your personal computers as well. 
because someone might be navigating and driving on the mob station to do something. And then I can go look at the pipeline on one of my screens, or I can go look at planner, or I can go any of the things that uh, we need to access. It just uh, creates a great experience for kind of that multi-threaded mobbing that sometimes happens. Someone's researching or someone's looking the Kanban board or checking this or that. Um, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, th that's been also very beneficial. Um, and another one is if needed, if uh, <laughs> sometimes hardware isn't great, um, is to separate it into two computers. So for me, I typically have one computer that's just dedicated to the video chat. Yeah. Um, and then the other computer is dedicated to any of the other tools I'm you know, doing to control any desk or to control any of the browsers or any of that kind of thing. Uh, and that's been a good pattern. If you're like me, where some of the hardware I had wasn't working great trying to do everything on one processor, <laughs> it started to uh, crash everything. So, <laughs> so. All right. uh, how about you? Anything else before we close? Yeah, yeah, no, um, I think that's it. Uh, just, you know, think of collaboration. I, I would say post other tools that you think are great for remote mob programming in the comments. And then make sure that you share this video if you think it'll be helpful for other people. A lot of the tools that we mentioned today, some of them are paid, some of them are not. Some of them have free trials uh, if they're not being used for commercial use. And so I encourage you to research the li licensing before. So I just want that disclaimer out there. We're not, we're not saying that all of these or any of these are free. So um, yeah, I, I think that's it. So all right. Until next time, see you guys later. Until next time. Bye, everybody.